welcome to my workshop. Uh, today I hope to be putting back together my CNC router. Now I've, um, I've stripped out the x-axis and I've cleaned the um, ball race out so well that just gravity will allow this thread to actually go through the bearing and it runs very free. Um, but I will show you what I actually got out of this bearing. And I'll also show you a couple of other things that I found um, with the thrust bearing on the end. But first of all, I'll show you what came out of that bearing. Okay, I hope the camera's picking that up. It should do. Um, it's all matter of grit and goodness knows what. And here, you'll notice little shiny pieces. Now, there's quite a few of them in there, um, and in here. Now, I don't know exactly what it's from. I can't find any evidence of the, um, I can't find any evidence, and I've looked at this with a microscope, of any pitting or anything at all. It runs freely. I really just can't tell you where it came from. Anyway, one thing I did discover. Right, so this is what I found. Now I've cleaned these up, obviously. Now, so there's one half of the thrust race here, which goes on the shaft so. There's the actual ball cluster itself that goes on the race, and there's the other half there that preloads onto the bearing. Right? Preload means to put a bit of pressure on it to stop the uh, slopping back and forth. And you remember when I started to take the x-axis apart, when I took the stepper motor out, I could actually move it back and forth about two or three millimeters. Well, I'll show you the reason why. Um, so, I'll put those on there a second. Um, but before I get to that, um, this bearing is supposed to be preloaded, like I said. But, um, the next thing that was on there then was the bearing itself. The, the, the other bearing that's uh, held into the housing. Well, it's impossible for this to, uh, to be preloaded because you're supposed to put the preload pressure by the center of this bearing. In actual fact, the outside of the bearing was trying to put pressure on it. This doesn't rotate. The center rotates. Um, so, I have to fix that up by putting a, a, a spacer on the center here to uh, allow to preload that bearing. But this is how it was assembled. There was just that, then there was this, and that's as far as it goes because run out of thread. And there's, that was locked up on it. That's how it was in the housing. The housing just holds this. So the whole thing was slopping back and forth like this. There was no preload on this, this um, bearing here. So what I have to do now is make a shim to go in between there and another shim to go in between here. So I can, you know, if I get these off, so I can load up this bearing by the center and preload this bearing and stop any slop back and forth and make it work like it should do. Uh, what also I'm going to do is 
Now this is the hole that gets the lubricant, the grease. And that's as it comes. There's no grease nipple, no nothing. So what I've had to do is, uh, this is a, a syringe um, with a rubber end on it. And I've filled it with grease. Uh, so what I'm going to do is to just press that into there and pack it with grease. Um, better grease as well. When dealing with grease and oil, it's always advisable to use, well I always use nitrile gloves. These are um, hospital grade. Um, because otherwise you might end up with a rash or something. So all I'm going to do is try and inject some grease. It takes a fair bit of pressure to get that in there. Right, I've got it oozing out there and there now. So I know get this grease getting all the way through it. So we should do that a couple of times, flush it through and run it until the grease actually stops coming out on the thread um, because by all accounts this is supposed to be kept sort of grease free it's supposed to be kept grease free like this just maybe a film on it um, but I think um, what I'm going to do is when I put it together I'm going to put it together minus the shield in the front so every couple of hours or hour or so I can actually clean this off or oh, well grease this bearing up as well which is a fairly simple job while I got this going what I like to do same sort of trick squeeze it in through from one side till it comes out the other and then you know it's going right through the ball race see Just like that. And just pat it in with your fingers like this, so now I know it's well and truly greased up. This one's fairly easy because the ball race is open at the front. It's just, just a simple matter. It's a bit messy. Okay. Okay, so it's assembly time. It's just a matter of popping that in there. Thrust bearing. Now then I've some special flat washers here which allow me to preload that bearing. I've also machined the back of these down nice and flat so it can butt up against that. I can actually yeah, feel that a little bit better. What I need is some grips so I can put a little bit of pressure on it. But I'm just going to hold this by hand. Now to do the lock nut up, it's the exact reverse of what I had. Just 
probably tight enough there. Don't think it's going to come undone now, right? What I'm also going to do, now this is the way it was assembled when it came here uh, by the manufacturer. With the grease administering hole there at the front. Now, as, even with this raised right up, it's going to be awkward for me to get at. And it's a fairly simple process when you know how to do it to get the back cowl off. So what I'm going to do is actually rotate the bearing 180 degrees. So all I've got to do is take the back cowl in off and put my grease equipment in through at the back and pop a bit of grease in the bearing. Yeah, no problem with those screws whatsoever. I thought they might not have lined up uh, 180 degrees out of phase, but that feels so much better. It's firmer. There's no, no more slot back and forth now. And that bearing, both bearings feel really sweet. So it's just a matter now of getting the stepper motor on the other end and uh, putting the cowl in on and we'll give it a try. Right, so now time to put the x-axis back in. Okay, and I think the best thing for me to do actually is actually bolt the motor on here first and then do the clamp up so then I know it's all the way home and there's no load actually on the clamp itself on the, on the actual clamp and the shaft. Get these snug first. Of course going into it, these little bolts, fine thread going into aluminium, you're going to be pretty careful, you don't strip the thread. No. No, if I orientate it like that, then do the shaft clamp up, or the flexible drive clamp, whatever you want to call it. So it has to be quite firm. What I do with these, because these are so long, I actually catch hold of them halfway, and because uh, I get a better feel with it. Sort of get to judge how tight to do it better. There you go, that's it. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's see if it works. I suppose um, put a program in and see if it's fixed it. But, um, I do like to try and fix something myself before I send off for a new pair. Um, so for this video I think uh, that'll do. So if you've liked what uh, you've seen please subscribe to my videos or alternatively press like if you like it or um, up in that top corner you'll see a little red box, you press on that and it'll take you to my YouTube channel where there's a good selection of uh, videos incorporating 
CNC machines, a little bit of computer work now, and um, wood turning and um, different other shop project uh, projects that I do around here um, that you may like. So, bye for now. What I've got to do I forgot I had the bearing on the end there and I dropped it off. Oh, while I'm at it, I'll grease this ball race up too. Probably use some of the grease that I'm... Ah, no I won't. I use fresh. Okay. It's a matter of getting the excess off now and um, start putting it together. Uh, now I can't turn the camera off. Um, right oh. Right, so it's on with the cowl. So hopefully it's going to be the exact reverse of what the cowl. Far enough down. 